All right, good evening, everyone, and thank you for taking the time to join us tonight via Zoom. My name is Jason Moore, and I'm with Corporate Communications for the City. Tonight, happy to be helping facilitate this Ward 1 meeting. For those of you who are new to Zoom, welcome. We hope you like it. We also hope we can get back to in-person meetings again very soon. This Zoom platform does give us a couple of ways to interact. You can ask questions of Councillor Francis and others through the Q&A feature, and you should see that along the bottom of your screen. You just type your question in whenever you want. There's no need to wait and we'll read it aloud and get it answered by the appropriate people. The other option is to click the raise hand icon and you can ask the question yourself that way. Again, no need to wait, just click the raise hand option whenever you're ready and we'll get to you as soon as possible. I only ask that you keep your questions as concise as possible, written or verbal, and we'll do our best to have them answered. That's the basics of Zoom. Now to the meeting, we're here to specifically discuss Ward 1 and the issues and opportunities for Ward 1. This is the ninth of 10 ward specific Zoom meetings that we're hosting over the course of October and November. And as always, we have encouraged and we do encourage those with issues or opportunities specific to their ward to bring them up during their meeting. This way we can all stay focused on the ward at hand as much as possible. Joining us tonight is of course, Ward 1 Councillor Fred Francis, but also Windsor Mayor Drew Dilkins and a number of administrative staff are here to help answer any questions the councillor or mayor might wish to defer. There is an hour slated for this meeting, so hopefully that works out. But for anyone who may have less time to give us, we'll be trying to get the full meeting up on our YouTube channel tomorrow. Lastly, if you have any questions that we don't get to this evening or that maybe come to mind later, you can always email your ward councillor, the mayor's office, or 311 afterwards. Now that we know what we're in for, I'd like to ask Councillor Francis to activate his microphone and share a few words to start us off. Councillor? Uh, thank you, Jason. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, it's uh, nice to be with you. Too bad we couldn't be in person, but hopefully that will be coming soon. Uh, I, I wanna try to use as much time as we can for uh, questions and answers. So I will save my remarks till the very end, but I do wanna introduce, just to let everyone know who is on the line with us today, uh, Mayor Drew Dilkins, who will be speaking shortly, uh, the CAO, Jason Raynor, uh, Joe Mancina, the city treasurer, Chris Nepsey, chief engineer, Tyson Craig, ex executive director of Transit Windsor, Franz Isabel Tunks, senior manager engineering, Shauna Bokes, executive director operations, Fung Nigai, manager co contracts, field services and maintenance, Jim Leather from environmental services, Jane He from the engineering department, Andrew Dahar, executive director, employment and social services, Ray Mansour, Commissioner, Community Services, Jen Knight, uh, Executive Director, Recreation and Culture, James Chaco, Senior Manager of Parks, uh, Justina Nwazi, uh, Planning Department, Rob Vanny from the Building Department, Juan Paramo, Engineering and Planning, um, Bill Tetler, Manager of Bylaw Enforcement, Greg Robertson, Licensing Commissioner, and representatives from Windsor Police, uh, Deputy Chiefs uh, Providenti, uh, Belair, Superintendent Potvan, and Director of Emergency 911, Laura Smith, along with Neighborhood Watch representatives, uh, Melissa Lozon and Chris Cookson. Some of these folks will be making uh, short uh, presentations um, coming up just to kind of anticipate some of the questions I might hear tonight, but also to answer some of the questions I've already received uh, prior to this meeting. And to Jason's point, if for whatever reason uh, you can't get in today, uh, you can always email me at ffrancis.citywindsor.ca or call me on myself, 519-990-4138, 519-990-4138. Um, some of you have already texted prior to the meeting, so I'll get to some of those calls as well. Uh, with that all said and done, we could begin. I'll turn it over to Mayor Dilkins uh, for him to bring greetings to his, uh, not only his fellow residents, but his neighbors. Yeah, I'm a Ward 1 resident. Thank you very much, Councillor Francis, for the introduction. And uh, good evening, everyone. We have a good number of people on the call today, as expected in Ward 1, always one of the highest uh, turnouts for Ward meetings. And I appreciate uh, everyone adjusting and adapting with us here during COVID as we get through hopefully the tail end. Uh, of the pandemic. I know it has been rough for many in the city. It's been rough as a city councilor, as mayor, anyone in leadership, but also on many families, people with kids trying to navigate the school system. It doesn't matter. Every single family has been impacted by COVID. And I just wanted to start off by thanking you for, for working with us. I know it's been uh, trying over the last 20 months, but we've done our best collectively uh, to try and get through this pandemic together and get to the other side. And we're almost there. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, and I'm, I'm really pleased uh, that we're almost out of this and everyone hopefully can start planning a vacation and, and thinking forward in the future uh, sometime very soon. As it relates to COVID uh, and our finances on the city side, uh, we have done a really good job 
Uh, the team here on the line has done a great job managing the budget, the financial picture, and the vast majority of our deficit, which is uh, about $13 million, almost, almost $11 million of that, really relates to operations of the tunnel uh, and the airport. Of course, the airport was closed for part of the year. Uh, the tunnel just recently opened uh, for some traffic, but we we've, we've still are down about 80% in terms of volumes. And so the team has gonna, done a good job managing that and, and, uh, and putting us in a position to go to the federal government uh, and the provincial government to make a case that, hey, we are the only city in uh, Canada that operates an international border crossing. These are exceptional circumstances. Uh, need to be looked at. And last year we were made whole and I expect this year uh, we would be in a good position as well. I wanted to acknowledge uh, all of the work that City Council has done with respect to the hospital and the fact that just about a month ago the Premier was here with the Minister of Health uh, with the check for $10 million. So it's no longer a pipe dream. It's no longer if we get a new hospital, we've moved to the next uh, phase of the process, which is when we get a hospital. So today uh, you will see from the Windsor Regional Hospital side uh, and our communications as well, the hospital has already started the interaction with the public, the engagement. This is where uh, folks, they start laying out the hospital, designing what the needs are, how big the hallways will be, the rooms will be, uh, what services will be delivered at the hospital on the new site on County Road 42 versus downtown uh, in terms of service delivery uh, in the downtown core, which is a commitment with this plan as well. Uh, but I'm really happy that we're moving forward and City Council has, has done yeoman's work uh, to make sure that we're doing all we can in a responsible way to collect the 10% share that we are, are required to fund uh, of this overall project. And we're using all of the revenues we're earning from the solar operations. So when you drive out on County Road 42 and you see one of Canada's largest solar farms, know that the revenue the city is receiving, uh, uh, the, the, the vast majority of that revenue is actually going to fund the hospital that will be right across the street. Uh, I also wanted to mention uh, Windsor Works uh, and our economic diversification strategy. And it's not lost on me when I come to City Hall every morning and I look out the window and I see Casino Windsor, uh, Caesars Windsor, the fact that 1,100 people are out of work. Uh, I know, obviously, the news. Everyone on council and the city is aware of the news of our largest employer, Stellantis, and the second shift uh, being disrupted because of global uh, chip shortages related to COVID. Uh, and so we're very aware of that. Uh, and Windsor Works is our commitment. Uh, to start diversifying the economy. Council has supported this, has put some funding on the table uh, to put the city in a position to be able to become more resilient and really connect in a tighter way with the university and college, uh, which is great news. And I, I will just end uh, Councillor Francis by mentioning budget 2022. Uh, that budget will be delivered to city council on Friday, will be available to the public uh, next Monday. Uh, and I want to acknowledge right here and right now that it is not lost upon anyone at City Hall that when you go to the gas pump, you are paying $1.40 to $1.50 a liter, that milk is up 12%, your insurance rates are up, groceries are up, you can't eat out for less than $20 for a simple lunch anymore. Uh, and, and so the inflation rate is not lost upon us. Uh, and we are doing all we can to make sure that uh, we actually far surpass the commitment that we made, which is a budget at or below the rate of inflation. We will far surpass that. Uh, and council, I think, will be pleasantly surprised with the numbers that are coming because we know uh, we do not want to add to the burden uh, that it is already out there in this community. We need to deliver services. We can do it responsibly. Uh, and the budget that you will see next week shows the pathway to do that. Uh, and it's been a lot of work to do that, but we're, we're quite happy to present that budget to the public uh, on Monday of next week uh, and have about three weeks to four weeks of community consultation before council actually deliberates the 2022 budget on December the 13th of this year. So with that, uh, thank you again for being here. Councillor Francis, thanks for an opportunity to speak and I'll turn it back to you. Uh, thank you, Worship. I appreciate, appreciate the comments. Little known fact for everyone on the line, anytime the mayor of Dilkins has an issue in ward one, he calls me as his ward councillor to get it resolved. <laughs> uh, but thank you for that, uh, your worship. I uh, certainly appreciate that. Um, next, uh, if we can have a, a representative from police, uh, just click on and give uh, the folks listening uh, a quick update as it relates to statistics and crime statistics in Ward 1. Uh, Deputy Chief Belair, I see you're on there, so if you will, please. Uh, thank you for having me, Councillor, and uh, good evening to everybody. Uh, I will be brief as requested, and um, I did pull together some statistics. So looking back from uh, this year back to 2016, Ward 1 has had a gradual downward trajectory in overall crime and including its monthly average uh, to the point that uh, during these past 12 months, Ward 1 has remained the lowest of all wards in the city regarding crime statistics. Uh, it garners about uh, somewhere around the range of 3% of overall crime in the city. Uh, we have over the last while diverted um, 
some of our resources when we could uh, away from some of the pandemic obligations to some focused traffic initiatives in, in Ward 1, uh, resulting in um, charges, um, sustained enforcement in the area. And I would remind everybody that if you continue to have traffic complaints in your ward, those can be submitted online using uh, Road Watch or traffic complaints through the Windsor Police website, through the city's 311 service, through a non-emergency uh, police line, um, or uh, if you wish, you can always get a hold of your counselor who can connect with uh, the Windsor Police uh, Service through uh, his channels and um, we can look at some uh, issues from there. Um, so that's a very high level uh, snapshot of what you have going on in Ward 1, your counselor. Thank you, Deputy Chief. I appreciate that. And hopefully when uh, the next few people are talking and providing some information, that might also encourage some of the residents on the line uh, to formulate some questions if, if their answers, if their questions aren't already answered. Uh, next up, uh, I'll ask Joe Mancina to click on. Uh, Joe Mancina is a city treasurer, and he could provide everyone with a very uh, high level and brief uh, accounting of the city's financial position. Go ahead, Joe. Good evening. Thank you, Councillor Francis, and good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Joe Mancina. I'm the Commissioner of Corporate Services, Chief Financial Officer and City Treasurer. Uh, um, just want to be brief tonight, a quick update on the state of the city's uh, finances. Um, let me start by saying that uh, the impact of the pandemic to the city over uh, the last 18 months, similar to other municipalities across, across the country, has been extremely challenging, uh, unprecedented financial pressures. Um, but as the mayor has noted, uh, here in Windsor, we've weathered that period quite well. Notwithstanding significant COVID pressures, the city ended 2020 in a surplus position and was able to offset approximately $50 million in 2020 in COVID-related costs through senior government relief funding and various mitigation measures undertaken. For 2021, the latest quarter three variance report uh, is uh, projecting a COVID-related deficit of about $3 million from the city departmental side, which can be fully offset by council's approval of a contingency uh, in the 2021 budget. Uh, and then there's the remaining balance of approximately $11 million related to the tunnel and the airport, which uh, we are advocating uh, aggressively to senior levels of government to get some additional funding to assist us, as was the case in 2020. Uh, notwithstanding these challenges, the city's overall financial profile has continued to remain strong. During this period, uh, we preserve and have healthy cash balances, uh, excellent liquidity, uh, we've continued low levels of debt, increasing reserve fund levels, and we've had a number of years of recurring operating surpluses, which has positioned us very well to weather the storm through the pandemic. Uh, the city's bond raters reaffirmed earlier this year the city's strong AA uh, bond rating, and that's uh, always uh, very positive uh, uh, from an independent third party getting such positive results. Uh, and so that is uh, certainly uh, reinforcing the, uh, uh, the excellent financial position the city uh, is in uh, related to that. Um, throughout this, City Council has also remained focused on the budget setting exercise on the provision of key services to the residents that they desire, but to also do that in a fiscally responsible manner. Uh, next week, administration will be releasing the recommended 2022 operating and capital budget. The 22 budget has been prepared based on the budgetary targets established by City Council and continues to be focused on the provision of valued services while also ensuring appropriate fiscal prudence in setting the budget. So uh, I just wanted to be very brief, a quick overview. Uh, things are um, going quite well from a financial perspective strong financial profile. And uh, thank you, Councillor Francis, for allowing me to say a few words. Thank you, Joe. We appreciate it. Uh, next up, uh, uh, Ray Mansour, Commissioner of Community Service, Jen Knights, Executive Director of Recreation and Culture. Uh, if you'd like to say a few words about uh, perhaps programming coming back to the Capri Recreational Center and what the plan is moving forward as we uh, uh, start getting back to normal. Thank you, Councillor. Maybe I'll start and then I'll let Ms. Knights uh, jump in. Uh, but basically, uh, Capri Pizzeria is back up and running. We have both ice pads operating almost at full capacity. The demand has certainly come back in that area. We've also uh, offered programming actually throughout the, uh, the pandemic. We pretty much continued at a reduced rate, but Capri was always offering programming both in person and virtually. And um, uh, I know we continue now to have uh, our, our day camps we had operating in the summer and they were at capacity and they were well attended and we got a lot of good feedback from that as well. So we plan on continuing to offer 
uh, more programming uh, and uh, enhanced programming come in the new year. Um, but I don't know if Miss Knights wants to, to add, but uh, certainly uh, we're pleased uh, the way things are, have been operating specifically uh, in your ward. Thanks, Ray, and thanks, Councillor Francis. Just in addition to what Ray mentioned, um, our staff team continues to take requests from members of the community. So please do reach out to our staff either through 311 or by chatting with staff on site. We are looking at programming to continue on uh, PA days um, so that folks have options for, for children. And as Ray mentioned, we'll continue to grow and offer additional programming as things hopefully progress uh, in a positive manner as we hopefully leave the, the pandemic. Uh, thank you both. Uh, certainly appreciate it. A few more to go before we open it up to uh, question and answers. We won't be that long. Uh, Mr. Chaco, James Chaco, uh, Senior Manager of Parks, uh, perhaps give everyone an update about the parks, uh, some of the work we're doing maybe in Central Park. And I will say, uh, Mr. Chaco is a good South Windsor boy. He and I grew up together. We used to play basketball in his driveway on Riviera. So he's very, very familiar with Ward 1, Central Park, Curry Park, and all the parks. So James, I turn it over to you, please. Thank you, Councillor Francis. Good evening, good evening, everyone. So certainly there's been some very exciting park projects within Ward 1 within the last year and some upcoming projects. So certainly within the past year, Central Park Phase 1 multi-use trail was completed. That runs along uh, the 400 meter section along the east side of Central Park. Currently, and just uh, being completed for the trail component is the additional 1200 plus meters of trails throughout Central Park. It's an exciting project and the trail is now completed uh, over the winter and early spring. There will be the additional trees, park benches, and all those other amenities that really make a, a great trail uh, system complete. So that's very exciting for the Parks Department. Other ongoing projects that you're seeing take place right now is our fall tree planting. So Ward 1 will see between 50 to 75 infill trees uh, planted within the rights away. So those are the trees that uh, are replacing ones that have been previously cut down. So those are the ones that will be in front of the residents' houses. Uh, this past spring, we saw 50 to 75 and uh, the upcoming spring is another 50 to 75. So basically you're looking at about 150 new large caliper trees being planted within Ward 1. So it's very exciting. Another forestry related project is, this is the first year of the seven year uh, full preventative maintenance area tree trimming program. So Ward 1 is one of the wards that does see work in the initial year. That value of that work is almost $600,000 worth of preventative maintenance tree trimming. So certainly that's going to address a lot of the concerns that we receive from residents, but we certainly always encourage everyone to continue to contact the Parks Department through 311 if they have any forestry related problems. Um, the next really big upside uh, up exciting upcoming project within Ward 1 is a number of playgrounds were recently approved by council to be replaced. That work will begin in earnest this winter and spring and will be completed by the fall of 2023. So there will be new playgrounds at Lake Laguna Park and Commoner Park in Southwood Lakes, as well as at Matthew Radzik Park and Dynasty Park. So those are four new playgrounds. That's a very exciting upcoming project and certainly something that is very uh, well requested by the residents of not only Ward 1, but all city uh, residents really do love their playgrounds. Thank you. Thank you, James. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, next up, uh, Craig Robertson is the licensing commissioner. And I asked uh, Craig to speak briefly here tonight because going into next year, uh, Ward 1 is going to be involved with a pilot project, a pilot project involving uh, the licensing of rental units and landlords that want to rent their units out will require a license to do so from the city. And before the city issues a license, everything has to be met up to standard and you know, essentially bad landlords that let their property go um, you know, de defunct uh, won't get licensed or if there's any criminal activity or if there's any wrongdoing or any uh, problem within the neighborhood as it relates to rentals, the city will have uh, essentially authority over that license. That's coming to us next year and I'll turn it over to Craig Robertson right now. He could speak to it a little bit uh, better and in more in depth than I can. Craig, go ahead, please. Thank you, Councillor Francis and uh, thank you for bringing me along tonight to say a few words. Uh, good evening, uh, Ward 1. Uh, as Councillor Francis has mentioned, my name is Craig Robertson. I'm the City's License Commissioner and Acting Senior Manager of Licensing Enforcement Services. 
Uh, I'm pleased to provide some high level information on the residential rental licensing pilot project that will be proposed to take place in your ward, ward uh, commencing next year. Um, at a previous council meeting, an administration was directed by council to bring forward a two year residential rental licensing pilot that would take place in both wards one and wards two. What this means for you is that there will be certain landlords in your neighborhoods who will be pro prohibited from renting out um, any dwellings unless a municipal license has first been obtained from us. It's going to be intended that the licensing program will consist of mandatory inspections to assess safe living conditions and ongoing regulatory enforcement will, will form part of the process to address social issues such as property maintenance and noise. Those are common issues we, we seem to find. Um, we have a diverse administration assigned to the working group consisting of city personnel from legal, licensing, bylaw enforcement, fire and rescue, building, and our tax department. We are nearing the final stages of our stakeholder consultation and currently gathering the data from our most recent public survey. Uh, we are hopeful to bring forward the details of the pilot project and a report to council in the first quarter of 2022 for consideration. Upon completion of the two-year study, administration will be responsible for bringing back a robust analysis and report for council direction to either abolish the program in its entirety or to implement a citywide licensing program. In the meantime, I encourage all residents to call or email 311 services should you have any concerns related to unkept or potentially unsafe properties in your neighborhood so that proper city resources can be deployed to address your concerns. Uh, thanks again for letting me say a few words tonight, Councillor Francis. No, thank you, Craig. That's very valuable information. Uh, and then our last uh, group of presenters, save the best for last, uh, Chris Nepsey, uh, France Isabel Tonks, and Jane He uh, from the engineering department uh, are here and will provide us uh, with uh, some information regarding uh, the Cabana Road Improvement Project. Uh, this is a project we were able to move on uh, several years ago. It's a multi-year project in the tune of about $50 million. And now we see it uh, evolving uh, throughout Ward 1. Uh, Chris, I'll turn it over to you, specifically if you could talk about the general project itself, where we're going, timelines, and uh, some of the driveway issues that uh, you and I have been going back and forth with uh, the last several days and what we can do, what we are doing. So I'll turn it over to you and your team, Chris. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Councillor. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Chris Nepsey. I'm the Commissioner of in Infrastructure Services for the City. Uh, Councillor Francis, I just want to check with you if you're okay if I just give a little bit of a general update on other infrastructure uh, that's going on Absolutely. and then we can get into Cabana Absolutely. Road. That way yeah. I can we can get through that because I, I understand sure. that's a, a massive project in the ward, but there's some other good things happening in the ward as well. So, okay. Uh, so, I, I'm going to uh, defer the capital side uh, and Cabana Road to France and to Jane as well. Uh, but we have, uh, with respect to transit, you have three new shelters uh, in Ward 1 that were uh, constructed in 2021. Uh, there's the the uh, pilot 518 route from St. Clair College to Tecumseh Mall, which is a fantastic update. Um, there's going to be some mill and paves completed this year on, on Cass Grain from Bartlett to Cousineau. Uh, several sidewalks in the works on Dominion, on uh, walkway, the Grand Marist Drain walkway, uh, and, and then next year on, on California. Um, you know, as well, we're beginning design on the street lighting replacements in Southwood Lakes. So that's looking to go to tender and be constructed for an early spring start. That being said, with COVID, uh, there's a huge delay on lighting equipment, but the plan still is to get it tendered and, and going next year. Um, Pollution control, I know that the, the, the plant's not in Ward 1, but there's uh, 5.4 million in upgrades going on at the plant that treats the sewage for all the Ward 1 residents as well. Uh, Huron Lodge uh, received an addition of the vestibule uh, uh, at the South Courtyard. Uh, and as well, I noticed one of the questions in there was about or organics, uh, that we, we don't have a problem and we can talk more about that in detail, but uh, there is a target of 2025 for the city to move ahead with a, a program on organics that way. So um, I'm gonna pass the baton over to uh, France Isabel Tunks, who's the senior manager of engineering uh, and who was um, you know, the, the, main, um, the main engineer on the Cabana project. And she can talk about, like you said, the driveway issues and that construction. So uh, France, over to you. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm the senior manager in the engineering department. And I'm gonna go through um, the list of the capital projects that are ongoing right now, give you a quick uh, status update. 
Um, as mentioned uh, earlier, the Cabana Road, the phase three is the current phase between Dougal and Mount Carmel. Um, that one is expected to be substantially complete by the end of this year, which is approaching very quickly. Um, and uh, the phase four is Mount Carmel to Highway 3. Now that uh, portion, you are seeing some work. Uh, most of that is the utility relocates um, and that will continue throughout um, uh, 2022. And with the tender expected at the end of next year for the sewer and road construction in 2023. Um, another project in the area is North Talbot Road Improvements Phase 1, and that's between Howard and Southwood Lakes entrance. Um, that project, uh, they're currently working on water service connections this year. Um, that's expected to be completed uh, by mid-December, and the sewer and road work will start uh, in April of next year and should be completed by the summer months. Um, we also have Curry, uh, Curry Local Improvement between Norfolk and Rashardi. Um, all the underground works completed here and base asphalt is, uh, will be placed this year and the restoration um, next spring. So that's the highlights of the uh, ongoing construction projects. I don't know, um, we're gonna speak to Cabana um, separately or up to you how, how you want to proceed, Council. No, that's great. We'll, we'll leave it for the Q&As. If anyone has any specific questions on Cabana, we'll be coming right back to you, uh, France. And uh, thank you, uh, Chris, uh, for your team uh, is information. So hopefully that information was helpful for people watching. Hopefully it answered a lot of the questions you might have had. Maybe it encouraged you to have more questions. So Jason, I'll turn it over to you. We can begin with the q and I will say I, I have gotten a few text questions. And uh, before I go to you, I think the best question of the night is, um, what's with the beard? Uh, are you having a midlife crisis? <laughs> it's a great question. Uh, no, not having a midlife crisis, although one might be coming soon, who knows. Uh, this is uh, for November Grow On campaign uh, for cancer awareness, research, and uh, medical equipment in our community. I'm one of the ambassadors, and as a result, I'm helping to promote the program and the fundraiser, and I'm growing out my beard for the month. Uh, rest assured, it will be gone December 1st. Jason, over to you, please. Thank you, Councillor, and uh, thank you to administration. I think it worked. There were a number of hands up that have come down, so I think you hit some nails on the head in that. But we do have lots of questions to get to, so we'll start with Sylvia, who writes, Streets east of St. Clair College, Mount Carmel, Churchill, Villa Mare, have either or both no parking or no parking between 8 and 5. So I think she's wondering what can be done about that. Yeah, we're, we're actually, you know, before COVID hit, uh, and, and Shauna Vokes uh, can kind of uh, come in on this as well. We, we had initially planned to have a neighborhood meeting involving all those neighborhoods, all those streets, and we wanted to streamline and we wanted to have consistency on all those separate seats, streets with respect to no parking uh, times and no parking signs. So we really were gonna streamline it because we heard from a lot of the residents and as opposed to just doing it piecemeal, we are gonna meet with all the neighborhoods and, uh, and all the residents in the neighborhood and say, okay, this is what our plan is to streamline it. Are you in favor of it? And then we're gonna move forward. Unfortunately, we were delayed with COVID and we were unable to get everyone in a room, but that's something we're still looking forward to do. And hopefully we could do that soon with respect to the restrictions. But um, Shauna, I don't know if you wanna to add to that. Uh, not a whole lot, Councillor. That was uh, exactly it. We're just waiting for the appropriate time to be able to present some options to the residents. Uh, in the meantime, there have been a few petitions in the area for specific blocks that have gone forward and, and have been successful. So small changes were made uh, to, to accommodate those petitions. But I do look forward to trying to get some consistency out there with you. Yeah, and, and, and that's uh, to the question. Uh, that's essentially what the plan is. Uh, but bef bef before we do that, we just want to make sure everyone's aware and everyone has a say as to if they agree, if they disagree, or if they think anything else could be done. But that's coming down the pipeline for sure. Thank you, Jason. All right. Thank you. The next question, we'll try to bring in Judith. Judith has her hand up, had it up for quite a while. So we'll try and bring her in and see if she can unmute mute her microphone and go ahead. Oh, hi, um, and thanks for the update on Cabana Road. I was just wondering, 
with uh, the Cabana Road improvements, which, which are a great and a welcome uh, asset to the neighborhood, wondering if it will have a positive impact on any of the stormwater issues that seem to plague the South Windsor area. Will it improve that neighborhood? Um, we, we do have issues with the drainage and water runoff and things like that. Just uh, hoping for a positive answer on that. Yes, Judith, thank you for the question. And I'm, I'm excited to answer this, but uh, France, uh, you, you can as well. Uh, the, the short answer is yes. Uh, part of the reason why we wanted to move forward with Cabana is that it will improve the drainage and uh, stormwater management along that whole corridor. And uh, flooding remains a huge issue in Ward 1 in South Windsor. It remains a key priority. Uh, there's, no, there's no doubt about it. Uh, not a week goes by that we don't talk with engineering or engineering doesn't talk with us about ways we can make improvements. You're gonna see areas in the ward that have a pilot project for uh, downspout disconnection. And don't be surprised in the next couple of years if downspout disconnection goes citywide because we have to remove water from the sewer system. And that, what the engineers tell us, will make a, a quick and significant difference to how much water is in the system. So if you remove water out of the system, you greatly reduce the chance of flooding. So to answer your question, Judith, the answer is yes, but I'll also turn it over to France if she wants to add to that or Chris or anyone else from engineering uh, who wishes to add. Yeah, I, I'm gonna go first, Councillor. I'm gonna let France jump in. She'll have definitely have a, a, a more of the details for me, but but uh, again, you hit it on the, on the head in terms of uh, all those little things make a difference, right? All the downspout disconnects, all the, uh, the smoke testing, all, all the, uh, the pans we're putting in the manholes to not allow water to uh, become part of that I and I. So uh, we're making improvements system wide. Uh, we just applied for a massive grant at the, um, at the Lou Romano plant to be able to lower uh, the hydraulic grade line at the plant, which will impact and, and positively impact all the residents in Ward 1 as well to help alleviate uh, um, uh, flooding and, and mitigating those severe wet weather events. But I'm going to uh, uh, pop it over to France and she can um, provide more details. I think you both stole my thunder. So I, I think you both got it covered. Uh, I don't have anything else to add. Thank you. No, thank you. I appreciate that. And I know the people that live along Cabana uh, on those side streets are concerned about that. And uh, especially so the, the folks that live in South Winds, the South Winds Tower that have experienced flooding several times over the, the many years. Uh, just rest assured that everything we do is uh, uh, flooding is a key priority and we wanna eliminate that. We wanna eliminate basement flooding and uh, we will do everything we possibly can. We won't spare any expense to make that happen. Uh, but climate change is real and uh, the challenges we face are, are, are very real. Um, so uh, I hope that answers your question. I'll go ahead, Chris. Yeah, just a little bit to more. And, and I think you, you, you made that in terms of spending money. Um, you know, that subsidy program has had over 7,500 applicants and millions of dollars of subsidy that the city has given out for residents to be able to help themselves. So, um, you know, council made that proactive decision to do that. And uh, it, it's happening and it's, it's all helping. No, thank you for that. And for whatever reason, if you're watching and you haven't taken advantage of that subsidy program from the city, uh, please either get a hold of me, 519-990-4138, uh, email me uh, at francis at citywindsor.ca, or go to the city's website and find out information about the flooding subsidy program. There's money available to you from the city uh, that will help you install the tools needed to keep your basement from flooding. Um, so hopefully that helps. Go ahead, Jason, please. Our next question, Councillor, is on housing. Housing supply in South Windsor is way too low to meet demand contributing to the housing crisis currently. Can we, the city consider amending zoning bylaws to introduce more missing middle housing? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think we're considering everything. And when we talk about uh, housing and housing stock, or first let's talk about affordable housing and the investment that the city's made out on the East End with respect to Meadowbrook. That's a first new build for affordable housing in a significant way the city's done in, I don't know how many years, if not decades. So this council is definitely serious about that. And we wanna provide more uh, affordable housing stock. South Windsor is a, a desirable location. Uh, people wanna live in South Windsor, we see that. We see that with the housing prices, uh, not only what they're being listed at, but the bidding wars and what they're going for. I'm seeing houses go for 100 to 200,000, in some cases more over asking 
because people want to live in South Windsor. So I'm a big proponent and we have to do whatever we can possibly do. And hopefully the federal government assists with, with what's going on right now and um, you know, maybe limits the number of foreign uh, investors that are coming in and buying housing stock that can allow us to provide that for residents of the city of Windsor. Uh, I think it's unfair for residents who are competing against foreign investors uh, who are able to drive the price of, of a home uh, extremely high. And not only do we see that, but we understand um, South Windsor is a very desirable location and we only have to look at the, the building boom going on in LaSalle uh, to know <laughs> of, of people want to live in this area of the region. Uh, but you also see building booms in Tecumseh, Lakeshore, Amherstburg. It would be fantastic if we could get these people to purchase here, invest here, but uh, the stock is limited and the land is limited. But anything the city can do to assist first time homeowners, to assist people looking to maybe make a upward move with respect to size of their house, yeah, I'm all for that. And, 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 and I think the planning department does a good job of bringing those tools and information to us. Very good, Councillor. Our next question we see uh, from Salman has his hand up. So if we could bring Salman in, I hope I said your name right too. Yeah, you did. Great. Go ahead, sir. Hi, so, uh, hi, Fred, how are you? So good, how are you? first of all, uh, great job you guys are doing uh, with the city. Uh, keeping uh, the funding and uh, improving <clears throat> all the time. I have actually uh, three questions, uh, if I may. Three questions. <laughs> Sorry about that. So Go ahead. Uh, we'll try our best to answer them. Cabana, um, it's needed definitely, but uh, it's a huge inconvenience. So I thought that they would complete all the way till Highway Three in this phase. It doesn't look like that's the case, even though a lot of work is going on between Mount Carmel and Highway 3, that stretch, right? Yeah. So why not finish it in one go and be done with it? Because otherwise it just keeps on lingering into the next year and the year after. Yeah, uh, well, let me answer that one first. Uh, we can't go all the way to Highway 3 because some of that land is owned by the province. It's not owned by the city. So the city will go as far as the city lands permit them to go. Uh, but it is also phased in uh, to do it in a way where uh, we could do it in a cost uh, manageable way. Uh, but we also got to keep in mind, we can't all go all the way to Highway 3 because uh, some of that land, uh, especially around the Highway 3 corridor, is actually owned by the province. But France, if you want to answer that as well, please. Thank you, Councillor, for the question. Um, yeah, you, you're correct. Um, that portion is uh, currently we're doing the utility relocates in that section. Um, we plan to do the full reconstruction in 2023 due to funding restrictions. So we have we can't um, pre-commit funds beyond the five-year window. So um, as of 2023, we'll be able to uh, complete that um, that leg. So that's basically the answer. Um, the other thing is the Highway 3 portion, we do have to work with the MTO. We are going to be connecting uh, to make a smooth transition within their property um, as far as uh, the intersection goes. Yeah, thanks, Fran. So uh, Solomon, that's question number one. What about question number two? Uh, uh, number two is uh, the condos sprouting up all around um, one is slam bang in the middle of Southwood Lakes, uh, right behind uh, the church uh, on the east side of Howard um, and Lake Trail Drive. So that's a six story development appeared out of nowhere and uh, people have homes. It's going to be, these people are going to be looking inside like uh, a million dollar properties, which I don't think a lot of people are happy about. So yeah, no, thank you for that. On with that project. Yeah, so the, the, the residents of Southwood Lakes uh, had a meeting uh, sometime in the summer and they voiced their strong opposition to that. And the, the, the builder, the developer was on that line and, and he heard that opposition. And um, I, I'm included I was, in that opposition. I, I was on the call, but yeah. the thing is so, that they limited the call. Uh, so I could not hear it out. The thing is, uh, I just want to know what is the status of approval because I, he has already filed for approval of that, right? Yeah, and, and, and uh, unless someone from planning wants to correct me, last time I checked, nothing formally has been submitted to the city uh, with respect to changes after that meeting. 
Uh, now his representative did say that they heard everybody, they listened, and they're gonna make some significant changes. I don't know if the planning department has received those changes. Last time I checked, they hadn't. But if anything, everyone, if anyone's from planning or building that could answer that, uh, that would certainly be helpful. Who is here from that department? We got a Thank few you, Councillor Francis. Uh, this is Justina. I can speak to that. I'm actually working on that project. The uh, developer is preparing uh, revised drawings to uh, submit uh, in response to all the concerns that were raised. So we're still waiting for the package. Yeah, so Solomon, to answer your question, we're still waiting to see what changes are gonna be submitted. And, and, and this is a very public process. So residents are still gonna be able to have their say. It's gonna to go to standing committee. People could come and object to it and voice their concern. And then it's gonna to have to go to city council and people could come to city council and object to it. And then council is gonna to have to decide. But I certainly agree with you with respect to the, the, what was proposed. And I'm hoping something significantly scaled down is gonna be put forward. So we'll have to wait and see, but th that's coming as well. Uh, but it's hopefully significantly smaller. Okay, Solomon, last question, and then we'll let others ask questions. No, on the same one, I, 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 um, on behalf of the residents, I would like to uh, tell the city that we are not against developments. We just don't want them towering right in the middle of our homes. I think a one a single or double storied development would be just fine, uh, whatever. Or townhomes, town right? Or townhomes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so we are okay with that as long as it is not going well, the city solomon the city's heard you loud and clear on that one trust me they understand got it okay Question the third three. one is a okay so the third one is a long uh, standing request about uh, provision of more tennis courts so there's like an hour wait at central which uh, is the most popular uh, tennis playing area in ward one and uh, it's high time that we provided more quality courts in Ward, Ward 1. I mean, uh, it's a very popular sport, especially after COVID has gained in strength. So it needs to be taken seriously. Something has to be done because uh, otherwise, I mean, it, people are not, at least tennis players, and I know a lot of them, are not very happy. They have to go out far to play, and uh, it's, it, it's not very conducive to their health at the moment. So... And also the central courts, I told you, uh, Fred, uh, they were rebuilt two years back. They already got cracks on the surface and the nets are already, they got holes in the nets. Yeah. So well, those- We'll fix those. We'll fix those. Yeah. Uh, so to yeah, answer your third that... question, Solomon, uh, thank you for the questions. Uh, to answer the third question is, uh, absolutely. Anytime we could get more, and I see Jen on there and I'll let her speak to it in a bit, but uh, our recreational master plan, takes an inventory of all the different facilities, all the different assets, basketball courts, pickleball courts, tennis courts, swimming pools, ice rinks, everything citywide. And it told us what we needed. So anytime we can have more tennis courts, I'm gonna advocate for that. A few years ago, we, we, we actually got money to redo the central tennis courts. And if anybody remembers what the Central Park tennis courts look like, they were in pretty bad shape. And I remember when I asked, when was the last time these courts were redone? The answer I got was they've never been redone. And I think they were there for 30 years. So anytime we could improve our assets, anytime we could move, remove our, our uh, improve our recreational facilities, I'm gonna be a champion of that, especially in Ward 1. I'll turn it over to Jen and I see James might wanna add something to that as well. Thank you, Councillor Francis, and thank you for the question. And yes, as Councillor Francis mentioned, we, uh, in our recreation master plan, which was released in 2019, identified the 35 tennis courts across the city. And our consultant also noted that there's a resurgence in tennis. Um, so there was a, a note in the recommendations through the rec master plan that the addition of tennis courts in Ward 1 would be something that we should look to. Uh, in our short term, which uh, is the time period between now and the end of 2024. So that's what comes out through the Recreation Master Plan. And perhaps I'll turn it over to Mr. Chaco, who may have additional input from the park standpoint. Thanks, Jen. So certainly you're right. In terms of the, the Rec Master Plans, a lot of that's also mirrored within the Parks Master Plan. Uh, and from a maintenance standpoint, the question that Mr. Solomon had, 
Uh, the nets are, are constantly monitored. They will be replaced. We take them down over the winter. This past winter, because of COVID measures, we tried to leave the outdoor recreation amenities open as long as we could, which certainly put a little bit extra wear and tear on some things like nets. We're going to continue to extend them through this winter again to allow for as much uh, outdoor activity as possible. And then we will be replacing the nets at, at Central Park and continue to monitor the nets at uh, all the other tennis and basketball courts. Thank you, James. Thank you, Jen. And Jason, I, I got a text message that kind of ties into uh, the recreational uh, question that Solomon was asking. The question is, what's going on at Roseland? Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, it goes text to me. And uh, we are working right now. I am chair of the uh, board at Roseland. Uh, well, let me report first that last year was a very profitable year for Roseland. Uh, we made just under 300,000. And I can let you all know, I'm kind of breaking news right now, at the end of October, we are double that figure. Uh, so last year we made just under 300,000 and month ending October, we are double that figure uh, as a profit margin. Now we still have November and December. So obviously 600,000 might not be the final number, but uh, this year stands to be a very profitable year at Roseland and about a 10 to 15 year high uh, potentially with two months to go. So financially, uh, the club's doing good. The last two years have been extremely profitable and we're moving down that direction. We are also working on a new uh, build for the clubhouse. Uh, the, the board did approve a strategic plan. We approved a feasibility study. That's with city administration right now. And that hopefully will be coming to council, if not this year, early in the new year. Uh, city council in the last year's budget approved $4.3 million for a new clubhouse. And we're just working out the details and costing information on that. So hopefully we can have a new clubhouse shortly and it could be done within the $5 million uh, budget, give or take. Uh, so hopefully that provides an answer to uh, Roseland. Jason, I'll turn it over back to you, please. All right, now I'm gonna go back to the questions here. Can we get uh, dedicated bike lanes on Howard to connect the Herb Gray Parkway trails to Dougal Road? Yeah, that'd be fantastic. And the next big roadway in uh, the, the, next, the next big roadway improvement project after Cabana is going to be Howard. Uh, we are uh, going shortly to be working on that fork in the road uh, uh, where essentially uh, Howard kind of meets the train tracks going towards uh, the mall. Uh, so that fork in the road is going to be uh, worked on. I know that's something uh, Councillor McKenzie is excited about. And Councillor McKenzie and I talk about this uh, often. And I've told him on many occasions that I will support any initiative he wants to bring forward and I would ask him to support any initiative I bring forward that helps us move forward with the Howard uh, Road improvement. And anytime the city puts in a new road, be it on a, a side street or a major road, certainly uh, what you see uh, would be on Howard. What you see on Cabana, sidewalks, uh, lanes, and bike lanes, that will be on Howard. Problem is it's gonna be another $50 million and you have other councillors and other areas of the city that are fighting for funding for road projects in their ward. I'm hoping that myself, Councillor McKenzie, Councillor Morrison, the three South Windsor councillors can agree and work together to push that Howard Road Improvement Project forward. Uh, I certainly would not hesitate to raise my hand and support that project in a month's time when it comes to budget. But realistically speaking, it's a huge amount of money and uh, other councillors are fighting for uh, their areas. So yes, when that road work is done, there will be dedicated bike lanes, but it's a matter of time and funding, time and money, right? Any problem can be solved with it. And that's where we're at right now with Howard. Jesse. Thank you, councillor. Our next question is, are there any plans to erect signs on Aura and surrounding streets west of St. Clair College? If not, can there be? Uh, I, I'm not. I'm not really sure what that means. Erect. What kind of signs do, do they say? A good question. I'm not 100 sure. Uh, there's an increase of non-residential cars parking in the area, so it's oh, probably okay, so no parking signs. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, if 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 that's something that wants to be done, the residents want to be done. We have worked with Prairie Court before, and we've established speed limit signs on Prairie Court and no parking signs on Prairie Court, or is just kind of down the street. Uh, so we can certainly do that. So if you want to do that. Email me, call me, uh, ffrancis at citywindsor.ca, 519-990-4138, and I can certainly help you get that started. That's not a problem. We've done that in other parts of the ward. Terrific. We have a hand up from Tony. If we can bring Tony in to uh, ask the question. 
I okay. think so much. Um, this has kind of been discussed a little bit, but uh, my question has to do with uh, St. Clair College and here in Lodge, the villages of St. Clair, one of our largest, I guess we'll call it a corporate citizen in the area. And I think as the result of it, the traffic in all of the feeder streets from uh, EC Row to Dominion to Cabana are are ridiculous as far as the speed of cars going down the roads and the lack of um, stopping at stop signs. So basically cars get off at Dominion, they cut through down Norfolk and then Everts and then whatever side street they get to Beals and then they go down uh, to try to get to Cabana, whether they're going to LaSalle or St. Clair College. And it's wonderful to see St. Clair, you know, expanding, but it's really been at the expense of the neighborhood streets. We have kids walking to a large school zone. Uh, we have kids walking to school and uh, people don't stop at the stop sign. We used to have a police presence there, uh, uh, every once in a while, I haven't seen anybody in years. Um, and so um, it really, I think, is something that needs to be addressed. I don't think Cabana it, widening it is going to stop the traffic going from the expressway cutting through South Windsor to get to St. Clair or Air Cabana. So I just wondered if, if somebody has looked at that traffic calming initiative. Every day. <laughs> totally. Okay. Thank you for the okay. <laughs> yeah. No. No. Thank you for the question, and and and, and thank you because that reminded me. Um, we we are working on new traffic calming initiatives, and and one thing council did several months ago. I can't remember exactly what month, but I don't know if a lot of people clued into it. Uh, we did pass essentially a speed bump policy. Uh, so speed bumps are coming to the city of Windsor, and not only did we uh, pass. Well, I should say provide direction to administration to come up with the policy. So that's coming. So we're just waiting on the policy. And to show its commitment, City Council put $1 million into that speed bump uh, initiative. So as soon as that policy is ready to go, I will be raising my hand and telling them exactly where the problem areas are in South Windsor. And um, you're going to see speed bumps, not only on the side streets, but some on the, on the, on the main roads too, to get people to slow down. So I'm hoping that might resolve a lot of issues with respect to speeding. Another thing is I'm a proponent of police resources. I'm a proponent of more police resources, not less police resources. So when it comes to funding the police, I'm, I'm all for it. I wanna see more resources go to police because what I hear from you, Tony, what I hear from other residents in Ward 1 is what you just said. I wanna see more cruisers. I wanna see more police presence. I don't wanna see less. So anything we can do to help that, I certainly would be in favor of it, 100%. Jason? Thank you, Councillor. I'm going to cut this uh, question down right to the quick where it says Norfolk Street is a problem between 2 and 245. Is there anything that can be done about uh, the parking violations in that area? Uh, okay, I'll pass that over to uh, parking uh, and enforcement, bylaw enforcement perhaps, or traffic. Uh, there is a pretty specific information in there, so maybe we want to write that down so we can look after it. Uh, absolutely, Councillor. Uh, the Parking Enforcement Group right now has been doing um, some spot uh, targeted spots at a number of schools. Uh, unfortunately, we only have so many commissioners uh, on the street at any given time, so they are doing that on a rotational basis. Uh, I will speak with my coordinator there and uh, make sure that this location is on our list to, uh, to hit in the near future. Thank you, Shauna. And Jason, we are running out of time. Time goes by fast when you're having fun. And I'm, I don't know about anyone else, but I'm having really fun here. And thank you to members of administrations for being so helpful and, and jumping in here and with the information. Jason, I just got a text message uh, from a resident. A city tree broke one of our pipes and it turns we've had to pay for the damages out of pocket. The city told us they would provide no assistance. Not only this, but the entirety of Southwood Lakes has poor sewer systems, so we need to help where we can. Okay, so can someone speak to uh, putting in a claim uh, with the city of Windsor when there's suspected damage as a result of public property? Can someone just provide that information for the resident, please? How to initiate a claim for the, uh, for, for, for the city to review? 
Uh, do we have it? Oh, James. Councillor Francis, yeah. So I can, because certainly you, uh, what you touched on related to trees. So certainly we do receive a request from the public about damage claims regarding trees. So the easiest course is for two things. One, a resident to always contact the city through 311. And secondly, if you go to the city of Windsor's website, there is a tab that does indicate um, for how to put in a uh, damage claim form. So that then, then goes to council services and is directed to our risk management team. Thank you, James Fung. You have anything to add? Yeah, um, just wanted to, uh, yeah, this, I mean, I saw I'm a uh, manager of operations uh, for public works. Uh, we do have um, your service um, put for, uh, available to residents. Um, if, if you have uh, proper access to uh, ealing. Um, so if you are impacted by tree roots, uh, we do provide that uh, ealing service as part of uh, our service uh, for, and, and it is a free to all residents with available access um, to their, their, their pipes. Uh, and it's three times um, every uh, 24 months. Okay, so uh, that's the maximum. And then again, that's just to help the residents. Oh, thank you, Fong. Thank you, gentlemen, I appreciate that. Jason, we might have time for maybe one or two more questions. Yeah, the next question is about safety concerns. What's so a good one to take? I see on a daily basis cars that do not stop at the stop sign at Southwood Lakes and Lake Trail Drive, including electric scooters. Uh, can police do more about it or is there some kind of improvement safety we could do locally? Uh, well, well, certainly, while well, police are here, they're hearing that and, and you know they certainly hear from me and others. Uh, let me just say the Windsor Police Service are tremendous. They, we are, this city is very lucky to have the professionals we have at working at Windsor Police. And, you know, if we knew half the things they had to deal with on a daily basis, we, we would be astonished. And, and thankfully, we don't have to know about the tough work they do all the time. Uh, but but uh, they are very uh, professional and they're very uh, uh, good at what they do. So we will provide that information to them. And uh, I certainly will support them any way I can. And, and providing the resources they require to have more enforcement in Ward 1. Hey, Councillor, I think we're moving quickly towards the top of the hour, and I know you have a closing comments to make, so I'd just like to remind anyone who we didn't get to with a question, uh, please email the Councillor or 311 and we'll get an answer. So if you want to take over from here. Yeah, thank you, uh, and, 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 and thank you, everyone. This I wish we had more time. I, I wish we could meet in person and uh, see each other. Uh, I can't really see anybody. Uh, but uh, certainly uh, wish everyone's uh, been well, your families have been well. It's been a very difficult 20, 21 months. And uh, I wanna thank all members of administration for the work they've done uh, throughout that time period and that they continue to do. I wanna thank my council colleagues uh, and the mayor for the work they do and uh, working together as a team to move things forward in the city. Um, I've been on council for seven years. Uh, there's one more year to go uh, before the next election. And we've done a lot in the last seven years. We have new roads, new sewers, uh, new parks, new park equipment, new walking paths, new trails, new speed calming initiatives, speed bumps I talked about, hopefully a new Roseland clubhouse coming down the pipeline, new licensing regime for landlords, uh, new affordable housing units citywide. We've made improvements to the Capri Center, put up a basketball court there, more basketball nets, more gymnastic uh, uh, tools for our kids and programs. Uh, we've made significant improvements to Budimir, the South Windsor Library. Um, and we've done a lot in the past seven years. And like I said, there's one more year to go. And uh, it's not lost on me, uh, the importance, uh, the, the mayor spoke about this earlier, about fiscal responsibility. You all know me, uh, seven years in, I don't think what I say or what I do comes as a surprise to anybody anymore when it comes to fiscal responsibility. Every single tax dollar we spend I care about, and I know it's coming from you. And in many cases, it's coming from people who are living on fixed incomes. And it's not easy to be living on a fixed income right now. They get the price of gasoline, the price of milk, the price of beef, the price of chicken, the price of uh, gas, the, the, the price of everything seems to be going up. And I'm mindful of that. I've always been mindful of that. I will remain mindful of that going into budgets. And the mayor also spoke about it. I don't know what's gonna happen the next few months. I don't know how the elimination of the second shift at Chrysler is gonna affect our economy, but I know it's going to affect the economy. It has to, 1800 jobs, uh, not counting probably the five, six, 7,000 spinoff jobs 
that that kind of indirectly relates to, tough times are coming. And I'm aware of that. And I know a lot of you, tough times are here today. And I'm aware of that. And I'm mindful of that. And I'll never forget that. And the last thing I want to do is increase your financial burden. That's not my, that's not my MO. That's not my plan. That's never been my objective. So as long as I'm in this office, rest assured, I will do everything I can to ensure your tax dollars are spent wisely and efficiently. The other thing, and the lastly, I, I want to put uh, say is to the new hospital. This is something that the mayor spoke about earlier, and I've supported, I've always supported, and I will continue to support. We need new medical facilities in this community. We can't afford to delay. We can't afford to obstruct. And in my opinion, this new hospital should have been built yesterday. And COVID and what we've gone through in the last 20 months only highlights the emergency need for new medical facilities. So I wanna take this opportunity. If you're a medical professional, or if you have a family member or a friend who's a medical professional, a doctor, a nurse, anyone who works in the hospital, let me say thank you. Thank you on behalf of not only myself, but everyone on city council. I can't imagine what you've all gone through the last few months. And I couldn't imagine where our community would be if it wasn't for, for the work you've done. So, you know, if, if you're a nurse or you know a nurse or a doctor, give them a hug from me uh, because I certainly know the work they do and it's tremendous. So I'll, I'll end it on that note. Uh, thank you everyone. I wish we had more time. Like I said, email me at francis at citywindsor.ca, 519-990-4138. If you wanna call or text, we can certainly take this offline or talk tomorrow, but uh, thank you for participating. Thank you to members of administration and best wishes to you all. Please stay safe. And uh, I hope everything's well with you and your families. And that continues on uh, going into 2022. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jason.